welcome to The Ofrenda. My name is Nicholas Gonzalez. Thanks for coming over today. Today, I have a special guest. She is a wonderful actress, dancer, and performer. She is part of the Chicago cast that is located up in Broadway. Uh, her name is Ariane. How's it going, Ariane? It's going well. How are you? I'm well. Just, you know, surviving during this crazy time. Yes, I think that's kind of where we all are, day by day. Uh, how's how's New York treating you so far? Well, <laughs> we've had the most snow that we've seen um, in a couple of years, interestingly enough. But, you know, it's New York, so not like we're not used to it. Right. But um, I actually, at the start, pretty close to the start of the pandemic, ended up leaving New York City proper and heading upstate. So I've had a little more space to be free and out and about than most. So did you, are you still upstate or are you back in the city? I am. I'm still upstate. I um, I was kind of going back and forth for a while and then decided that uh, at this point, as long as Broadway is going to be shut down, I don't have a lot of reason to be there right now, kind of like sitting in an apartment by myself. <laughs> so I decided to stay upstate with family. Have you been able to kind of stay busy in your own right? I know you were doing some... Um, not quite performances, but you were a part of the, oh, what was it called? Uh, back in December. Oh, the, yeah. The One Night Only yeah. Best of Broadway special. Um, it aired on NBC. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was such an exciting experience. It was very cool, um, mostly because we're all itching to get back in the theater <laughs> in some way, shape, or form, you know, whether you're on the stage or off as um, crew. And just to have a moment to reconnect with everyone, reconnect with, uh, you know, the the powers that be, so to speak, in terms of um, producers and and musical directors and all of these people who we're used to seeing so much more frequently and certainly don't have as much contact, I would say, as we do with each other. Um, it was just nice, again, to be in that energy and, and to have a moment to remember what the life is like. Uh, I, I agree. It's been a while since I've been on stage or worked on the stage. But yeah, it was a lot of fun seeing you on uh, on TV and doing the opening number of Chicago. Thank you. Yeah, it was it was very reminiscent of, you know, going on tour and seeing that number again. Yeah, we're, it's, I mean, it's just such, I feel like anybody who has been a part of the show knows what a beautiful, you know, synergy that is created as soon as that, as soon as that downbeat goes, you know, <laughs> as soon as that music starts, we're all kind of caught up in this, in this world. And it's a beautiful thing that it's had such longevity there's that there's so much history to it it's it's very it's still it's it, I still pinch myself thinking oh I'm a part of this awesome <laughs> <laughs> so today who would you like to introduce us all to um you know it's so interesting uh this is actually the month at the end of the month on the 25th is, is the day that years ago I lost my grandmother my maternal grandmother who was one of the most foundational people in my life. She practically raised me. Um, she was my best friend and my support system and someone who I relied on so deeply um, for so many years. And it was so, it was so hard to lose her as well because I was just about um, into my teenage years, you know, those, those formative preteen years when, when you need that support and when you need that, um, comfort and mine was no longer there in that way. Um, and I thought that would be the story. But last evening, I had a dream about my paternal grandfather. And I don't speak about my grandparents on my paternal side nearly as often as I speak about my grandparents, primarily my grandmother on my maternal side. So I think I'm going to talk about my grandpa. 
And uh, my grandfather, this is on, so I'm a, of mixed ethnicity. My mother is black and my father is white. And this is my, my Caucasian lineage, my Irish, French, English lineage. And my grandfather, Robert, was just a light. He was so funny. <laughs> and I was just talking to my dad earlier because I was saying to him, you know, grandpa came to me in a dream and I'll share the dream with you because it was such a beautiful moment. He was standing behind me basically as if his right shoulder were against the back of my left shoulder and he was holding me up. And slowly we were walking forward. And as we were talking about, you know, this is a hard time. We're, we're all having a difficult time right now. Every day is a little different. We're not sure what the day is going to bring, what next, you know, challenge, I'll say adventure to make it sound nice, but it's been difficult. And he was walking me forward. And then um, after a few steps, he turned and sat in front of me and was just looking at me. And it immediately brought me back to my childhood. I was lucky because I had my grandfather up until, oh, I, actually this year will be seven years since he passed. And so I, I had my grandfather until I was, you know, almost 30 years old. and here I am, or 31, I should say, at this point. Oh my gosh, I don't even know how old I am. <laughs> I think COVID took a year from me. So <laughs> um, he was just looking at me and it took me back to my childhood because my grandpa was one of my favorite people. Like my grandmother, he was so funny and so charming and so silly. And I would find myself, when we would go to their house um, for holidays or different things, he was kind of my go-to person. I would find him wherever he was and sit on his lap and he would be reading the newspaper or would read to me or we would play some games or just just be silly in each other's um, in each other's company. And it's those things that you end up missing. I feel like you end up missing so much, particularly as you get older and you start to have to take yourself so seriously. So as we're taking ourselves so seriously, for we forget those innocent moments and those kind moments and those beautiful moments when you're not entirely sure what to do, but you have the opportunity to just laugh or to just be with someone who loves you so much that you feel good, you smile, you don't necessarily have a reason for doing it, but you're in a space that you know that it is both welcome and encouraged. And I think perhaps, you know, even now as I'm saying this, maybe that was part of the reason he did come to me yesterday in that dream, because we're, we're met with many different experiences right now of various degrees of grief and sorrow, which can also, you know, be linked to when we lose a loved one. And it's just a nice reminder that they're never that far away. If we can keep our heart open, if we can keep some hope, if we can keep some of that innocence, right, that love, that excitement, that maybe our loved ones aren't too far away from us, even though we're not seeing them every day, or even you know, every holiday like we used to. What are some of the um, the more silly memories then that come to mind when you when you re remember him? Well, one of my favorites <laughs> is when he would hug me. He would always stand on my feet. My my grandpa had <laughs> he had neuropathy, bless his heart, and he would give me these amazingly like all these hugs that just, it's almost like you're being squished down to your bones, like <laughs> these incredible, amazing hugs. But he'd be standing on my feet and my grandmother would yell at him and be like, Robert, you're on her feet. Get off her feet. She's a dancer. And like, <laughs> have a total meltdown. I'm like, no, it's really okay. And, you know, obviously, 
this is a grown man person, so he's on my feet. I'm like, God, I wish he'd get off my feet. <laughs> but, but, you know, at the same time, it is what it is, right? It's your grandpa. And, and how many times are you going to get those? I don't even know if I get those amazing hugs now. You know, I thinking about it. Um, certainly, I get really great hugs, but I don't know that I'll ever get another grandpa hug like that. I'm not sure anybody else is capable of giving one. <laughs> yeah, no, that's true. It's it's always interesting when you meet those people who like they have that one particular hug or that one particular look that they give you, and it's simply it there is no replacement for it. Yeah, you're exactly right. It's it's something that, again, I I do I. I'm not sure that, not that we take it for granted, but you, you never realize how important it is at the time until you don't have it anymore. Was there ever any moment when you were with him that you were suddenly surprised by how he acted or was there anything that you learned from him that you were surprised to learn from? You know, I think one of the, one of the things that always surprised, I don't know if surprised me is the word, but I think I was just always thankful for being able to witness was the love between he and my grandmother. They um, they met when they were teenagers and were together, you, you know, until their 90s. So basically they spent their entire lives, right, together in love and the the dynamic between this very silly person who I knew him as, right? This very silly man, but who so completely loved this woman, so completely loved my grandmother. Now as an adult, thinking about what what kind of a a love that is, right? To spend decades and what kind of a commitment that is to spend decades, to spend your life with someone else we live in a society where it's relatively easy to jump ship and to be part of such an incredible love story and to know that someone has, and she as well, right? That someone has the the capacity to love that deeply and that entirely is just such an incredible gift and an incredible lesson. Yeah, I can definitely, I can see, especially having a relationship that long to just see from the outside how they were able to stay in love with each other because it's very easy especially after spending some time with someone you might start seeing their flaws or you might start seeing things that you aren't particularly happy uh to deal with but right. yeah but to to see that love stay I think is is a very key thing that, like you said, we don't see nowadays very often. It's very easy to see something that you don't like and just say, oh, well, I don't like this, and then step away and say, I'll find someone else who doesn't do this. But at the same time, you realize that real love is not supposed to be about finding that one particular person who has everything that you want. It's more finding people in general that share themselves with you. And yes. And share not only the things that you appreciate about them, but also some of the stranger stuff that you may not particularly agree with, but still appreciate in a different way. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. So you mentioned that um, your grandfather is from the Irish side, the, the I guess, the white side of your family. Mm -hmm. Is there ever any, I guess, issues or anything that came up growing up as mixed race that you realized? Uh, happened between your family or how did your I guess how did your grandfather deal with that situation because I know in some families it's it's not something that a lot of people can deal with I I have been very blessed in my um, in my upbringing my even the white side of my family really has always been very committed to and and I and I say that um, loosely because I I don't know everyone, right? I, I don't know everyone's story, but the stories that I do know and the ones that are closest to me um, have always had a major commitment to social justice. 
and have always been very open-minded and free thinking. And my grandmother is a powerhouse. <laughs> I'm obsessed with my grandmother. <laughs> um, she just turned, she'll be 101 this year, actually. And yeah, so um, I know that in the beginning, because my parents were married in the late 70s, that there were concerns, without question, there were concerns, primarily, you know, what's the world going to say? This is going to be a difficult, this is going to be difficult for you to navigate. Um, how are you going to make this work? And again, lucky me, right? My parents were just so in love with each other. They they were like, we're going to make it work. Whatever we need to do, we'll make it work. And then they had the backing of, you know, my grandparents on both sides. So our family has been able to navigate our way through things certainly much easier, I would imagine, than um, than other families who, you know, where there's blatant discrimination or, you know, blatant um, racism on either side, which we know that, as you mentioned, there very well could have been. But my my family has held really strong to each other. We are a family that, you know, I would say we don't even necessarily subscribe to blood family in that way. Your family are the people who take care of you, who love you, who support you, who stand up for you, who are willing to do what is necessary to make sure you know you're loved and taken care of and seen. And we just we just so happen to also be blood relations, right? But um, but but it expands beyond that. My uh, my godmother is someone who's foundational in our life as well, and she met my parents just before I was born, and she I'm closer with her than I am even with some of my blood relatives. So it's it was a very interesting dynamic to be born into for sure, but it never was something that I ever witnessed any sort of like animosity or any issues regarding it as I was growing up and, and even now, certainly. That's, that's good because I know for, for some people, it's, it's always tricky to be close to both sides of the family when you're in those situations. But yeah. So you mentioned how your grandfather is, is a very silly person. I'm curious, was there ever any moment with him that you remember where that wasn't the case that might have stood out for you? There was one t there was one time where he and my grandmother seemed to be in having some kind of disagreement. Um and I remember going, "Oh man, they they argue or <laughs> like and they, not even that they were arguing but they just were um they were seeing something um not eye to eye and i would again now as an adult i go okay well that's what being in a couple is right like that's a married couple <laughs> you're not always going to see eye to eye um but it was something that it, it was a bit shocking to me i would say at the time because I thought, well, there's nothing that they could possibly fight about. They love each other so much. You you don't fight anybody who you love. You know, all these things we think when we're little, we have no idea. Um, and equally, right, as we're sitting there, if we have siblings and fighting with them till the, till the death and then um, fighting with our parents and all those people who are guardians, whomever it is that takes care of you. And those are the people that we love the most. And so, of course, those are the people that we know we can kind of go for the gold with and still hope to bounce back the the next day. Um, but that, that moment, oh my goodness, I can't even remember how old I was, but certainly I was thinking to myself, well, geez, I, this is, I've never seen this side of him before. So how interesting that, that this is this person. And I had heard other stories that, um, he could be difficult or 
he was particular around certain things. But again, that was never my experience with him. I just got to have this really fun guy who made me laugh and who I just thought the world of. It's interesting when you do hear or you see someone act in a very different way than you're used to. And it's not a bad thing. It's I think it's a very humbling thing to sit back and realize that, yes, this is someone that you appreciate and you connect with, but they're also human. So it's very reassuring, I think, sometimes to see people in situations where they may not be necessarily at their best or at the at what you recognize. Right. But, but yeah, it's still it's still a positive thing, though, because then you can see them and say, oh, this person who I adore is is still human. And yes, they may act a certain way, maybe not around me, but around others. But that doesn't mean that they're any less lovable or care about uh, those around them. Yeah, I definitely think, you know, it's one of those things that to me, the more we can humanize, right, and really see different facets of the people that we love, we all benefit. We all grow from that because you know, what's the alternative? Having that person on a pedestal and then there's more, I'm not going to say opportunity in the way that it's like, oh, good, but but there there is more chance. There's the likelihood increases that when they fall or if they come down from that pedestal, um, that there's discord or that there's, that something happens. And so when we get the opportunity to see them in all of their humanness, it it really does make a huge difference for relationships. Yeah, no, that's good. If you feel comfortable speaking about this, do you remember the day that he passed away and what was going on? Um, we we actually had thought that he was going to pass in July. And he bounced back and we thought, oh, okay, no big deal. And then um, in August, my dad got a phone call and was asked to fly down there. They lived in Florida. My grandmother is still in Florida. And it was just really strange because my mother called and said that he had died. And I broke down crying because because for a few reasons right of course first and foremost because it's my grandfather but also because when someone when they get that almost second wind and you think oh they're gonna make it at least you've got a few more years we don't sometimes they do and sometimes they don't right like and and that is is frequent that frequently happens it's almost like they get this zest and stay around for a while but we but that's really just that moment of i don't know maybe that's the moment that someone gets to sort of fill in the spaces say their goodbyes do you know whatever they feel called to do or whatever they are called to do before they go but I was comforted knowing that he expressed that he saw family members who were who have already passed on and they were there to get him. And that to me was the most beautiful part because I knew he wouldn't be alone. And it was also the most heartbreaking part because my grandmother would be. And we didn't really, I, I didn't expect that she would um, continue on for so many years after him. She's a stubborn old woman, <laughs> which I deeply appreciate, fiercely love and respect about her. Um, but at that, I can't even imagine what it would be like from her perspective at that stage because I, I know how how heartbroken I was and and the sound of my mother's voice as well because my mother just loved him so much. He was always so kind to her and and really 
treated her like a daughter. So it was a hard day and it was a hard um, time after because we were all sort of trying to figure out what next steps were, right? We were worried about my grandmother grieving the loss of my grandfather and not really knowing what things would look like beyond having him as part of their unit, that unit that we were so used to being connected to and attached to. Yeah. Yeah. I, I actually lost my grandfather, my abuelito in a similar fashion where he got sick and uh, suddenly was feeling a lot better. And within a month of of him getting better, he suddenly uh, got sick again with pneumonia and passed away. So it was mm. it was very much a similar situation of you, we were everyone was getting ready to say goodbye to him, and then he actually got better, and so they were celebrating. And fortunately, uh, my mom was able to go the second time and see him before he passed away. In fact, all of my mom's siblings were able to go and be with him that last night oh so but yeah it is it is very strange to like you said see someone get better and kind of expect oh we've got more time we will go ahead and celebrate you know a few more christmases a few more birthdays we'll make sure that the the next couple of years are going to really matter and then suddenly it gets taken away it's very jarring it is. You you don't um and I think too once once people get to a certain age we sort of just expect they're going to stay. Like you're not there's no way you're going anywhere. You've been here for so long. There's no way you're going anywhere. You have to stay with me. And and when they go there's a, there's an emptiness. There is, there is a, there is a hole left in the space where they were. And, you know, regardless of whether it's a loving and beautiful, you know, relationship, or if it's a tumultuous one, that space is still there and it's not to be filled with anyone else. It can't be. So it leaves just sort of this hole, I guess, that eventually I eventually sort of fades to the back, but is never gone. Yeah. Is there anything that kind of re- helps remind you of him? Like, is there a particular smell that you smell and will immediately bring him back or a, a picture or something that you have that you connect with him? Whenever um, Notre Dame football comes on, college Notre Dame football, I think of my grandfather. <laughs> so that is that's one thing for sure. Um, and Thanksgiving reminds me of him. We were there one year, and we were saying the things that we were thankful for, and he stood up and started saying one of those silly off-color limericks, and my grandmother. <laughs> And my grandmother got so annoyed and was like, sit down. You are not supposed to be saying all these things. So he was shushed immediately. But every Thanksgiving, I, I think of my grandfather. Oh, that's that's lovely. I wish my Thanksgiving prayer started that way. That was <laughs> uh, with with Notre Dame, was he a big college football fan in general? Was Did he go to Notre Dame? No, you know, honestly, I think it was just the Irish thing. It had to have been. <laughs> so I think he didn't really, it didn't really matter. And I'm not even sure that he watched other college football games, if I'm honest. I think really he only watched Notre Dame and that was it. Is there, now that he has passed away, do you feel any, I don't know if the if the word change is necessarily the best one but is there anything that you kind of think about now in a different point of view i think about love differently 
And it really um, has kind of only been, I would say, in the last few years that I feel like I finally got the lesson. I was um, in a in a relationship with someone at the time, and and not to say that this was my motivation, but I thought to myself, is th- is this going to be my forever person? Is this going to be the person who I could be angry with, but still go to sleep with and know that everything is okay? Like, is is this my support? I, I think of one year at Christmas when we were all walking down a street together and my grandparents were still holding hands. They still held hands. And I don't, you know, I, I can't necessarily say it, it wasn't because, you know, my grandmother was there supporting him, helping him walk. But either way, what a beautiful moment, right? Like, that's still all these years later. I want to hold your hand because I love you, because I support you, because I'm here for you. And I was thinking, is that what I'm going to get in this situation and in this scenario? And sure enough, he came to me in a dream, <laughs> as he um, does, and and basically guided me. And, you know, I, I'm no longer in that relationship. And I learned the lesson. I was gifted, you know, the lessons while he was here. And, you know, while he's in the next realm, wherever he is at this stage, be with the person you love. And love them wholeheartedly. Don't don't take additional time to sort of go, oh, okay, well, you go, this is who I'm choosing. And I know a way forward with this person. I know a way back with this person. Um, we, we resonate on the same level. And even in moments of discord or discourse, the love is outweighs anything else. And that was such a profound thing to learn from someone who you wouldn't necessarily have thought you learned it from. Yeah, that's that's a good point. As far as learning love in general, I think a lot of us try and emphasize it on just learning one type of love from this one particular source because we don't think that Oh, a love for a family member can can necessarily translate to like a friendship or anything else like that. But in in reality, love in general is universal. It may present itself in different ways, but that doesn't mean that the root cause of it isn't the same. Right. If if you could come back for say twenty four hours, what do you think you guys would do together? Oh my goodness. Knowing him, we'd we'd probably sit down and and read a newspaper. <laughs> we'd probably just just sort of sit and and be in each other's company. Sometimes it's it's better to just have the company there and not have too many expectations. Yeah, it's it kind of it makes me think there are some people who you don't really need a lot of words for. You don't have to have a lot of words with, and. I was lucky there 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 didn't have to be a lot of words or a lot of talk or a lot of anything and I guess really one of the only things that I would I would selfishly want I say selfishly um he only got to see me perform once and I wasn't dancing (laughs) so that was really weird he you know he saw me as an actress um but didn't really get the opportunity to see me as a dancer and and you know and now in my life combining everything in terms of musical theater I would have loved to have him see me as a ballerina I would have loved to have him see me do ballet um no matter what my career is that has always been my passion 
And he knew how passionate I was about it. Um, I, everyone in my family knew how passionate I was um, about it. And so that's the one thing that I I really wish that he could have been able to see. And in my, um, you know, in my esoteric, I suppose, or more open minded way of thinking, I know that he I know that he watches me. I know that he's there. I know that he's seen performances and that I guess will have to be enough. Say if you could pick any role that you would want him to see you in. Oh, gracious. Um, I, you know, I have always, I've always wanted to dance Romeo and Juliet as Juliet. Um, maybe that's my sappy <laughs> romantic nature. <laughs> um, so I would definitely, that would be a role that I would like to see um, or have him see. But um, there was one variation that I would do frequently as a younger person, um, the dying swan variation from Carnival of the Animals. And it sort of became kind of my thing for a while while I was growing up in training. And I, I really would have, I would have loved for him to have seen that. It evolved over time as things do, right? As we get older, as we understand more about ourselves and and more about the motivation behind what we're doing. And I would have loved to have him be able to see where that progression went, like how things evolved by the time all was said and done. Yeah, that's that's a good point, because growing up, I imagine you were very much the the little dancer that kept going around everywhere, and to be able to have him see how much you've grown would have been something special. Yes, for sure. Well, thank you for, for talking about your grandfather and introducing him to us. He sounds like he was a very fun gentleman to sit down and talk with and joke around with and a very caring person. Yeah, thank you so much for letting me talk about him. I really, it's funny, like I said, I um, most of my most of my stories, because primarily my upbringing was with my grandmother and with the maternal side of my family, so... And and I would say too, in terms of my ethnicity, I I identify as a, if I had to choose, so to speak, I identify as a black woman, um, because my mother is a black woman, so I identify with my mother, of course. But it's always been really important to me to have conversations around mixed ethnicity, primarily uh, when it comes to black and white individuals, because there's so much because there's so much trauma, right? There's, um, and there is so much animosity between black and white people in so many instances and so many circumstances that the controversy that can arise from that is really immense. And again, it's difficult to navigate your way through. I think even now as an adult, I still find moments where I don't necessarily always feel like there's a specific place that I belong. And that has, I feel like on some level, informed most of my conversations around what it is that I discuss, what part of my story that I discuss, what part of my ethnicity um, that I discuss, because I feel like in so many forums, it's more comfortable for me to present as a black person, right? It's it's more comfortable for the audiences to receive that. And so I'm appreciative that you have granted me the space to be able to speak to who it is that I actually am, which is a mixed person in the world and someone who is of both African and you know, European ancestry. And to have the time to celebrate someone who I loved so dearly and so deeply um, and to share a piece of myself, like, as I mentioned, that I don't frequently have the opportunity to share. Yeah, I think 
one of the things that's sometimes hard for people of ethnicity in general, and especially of mixed ethnicity, is feeling like you have to fit in in a particular spot, that you you have to be part of this group because of such and such requirements, almost. And being able to accept all parts of you, I think, is, is key to not only show others around you, but to help accept yourself and be able to move forward in your own growth. Awesome. <laughs> so uh, if people want to find you on social media or find your work, what would be the best way to do so? My name, um, Ariane Cadell. So my Instagram handle is at A-R-I-A-N-K-E-D-D-E-L-L. Um, and I, I I try to post. I really suck at social media. So, <laughs> but you will see lots of pictures of my dog. <laughs> so you, if nothing else, you might see a picture of me, but you will see like 10 stories about my dog. Um, and then when we get back um, to Broadway, we hope sometime in the next, you know, four to six months, that would be the that would, that's optimistic, but you know, we keep our prayers up and open. Um, find me at Chicago, the musical at the ambassador theater, in New York city, 49th street. <laughs> awesome. Yes. I, I do hope we, we get to go back in sooner rather than later, but yeah, great. Well, thank you again for stopping by. Absolutely. Thank you for having me. This is a really beautiful and I'm very, very thankful to have shared it with you. Thank you all for stopping by and meeting Robert today. Feel free to rate and subscribe to us. If you want to reach out and share your own stories, feel free to email us here at stories at the ofrenda at gmail.com. And you can follow us on Instagram and Facebook at Stories at the Ofrenda. Be safe out there, and we'll see you all soon. Te quiero.